Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex. Yes, live from Harlem in New York City, it's the Ramble. He has nothing to say. If you look under his picture, it says Albert Reynoso, and that's his name. Which the other day I was trying to, I was saying the best producer I ever had was, and the only word I could get out was Reynoso. I forgot, I couldn't remember Albert. I do that all the time. Do you really all do that? Time. Yes, I do. I, I was trying to think the other day of the name of the guy who starred on Cheers, and I could not come up with it at all. Ted Danson. Yeah, I, I saw his face. I, I had to go through the alphabet till I got to T, and it hit me, Ted Danson. It happens all the time to me. See, and here's most the of the thing. time, here's when the I thing. go through the alphabet, I, I find yeah, it. But how old are you now? 61. 61, okay. This guy's... 25 years younger than I am, 24 years younger than I am. When you're that age, you go, oh, my memory, I forgot that. Okay, let, me, let me try and remember the name. When you're my age, you go, I'm losing it, I'm losing it. But you're not probably not losing it any more than you did when the same thing happened to you when, you know, you were 61. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay because I don't have that happen with a lot of things. It's really just names for me that I can't remember. Otherwise, I'm I'm still there. I think. Well, we Marjorie and I at home now look at an actor on TV and say, "Isn't that the guy who was in that thing?" That's it. But I I can't remember names. And That's in the fact, there was a documentary made called "The Guy Who Was in That Thing," and there was a sequel, "The Girl Who Was in That Thing." Yeah, yeah. There was a whole bunch of actors and actresses who, you know, you see all the time, but you don't know their name. Really good character actors who say, oh yeah, that guy, I like him, well, whatever his name I is. was watching an interview with Jerry Lewis and uh, Larry King, mm -hmm. and uh, they were talking about him. Can you do the Larry King and the Jerry Lewis together? I would love to hear. I know you do a Larry King, and I know you do I a Jerry do Lewis. do a Larry King. Really? For the full hour? You don't do Larry I, King, so I can do one sentence for a full hour. That's all you need. Now okay. you do the now do the Jerry Lewis. I know you uh, do Jerry Lewis. I'm taking a new pill. Come on, taking a new pill. What's what's the pill called? The gambling. <laughs> yeah, that never. Gets we, we're saying one time that uh, in uh, in uh, the pill business, they name a pill and then they say. Yeah, but would Jerry Lewis say it as a as a word? You know, riboflavin. So if it's a Jerry Lewis word, it's it passes. It passes. Yeah. So I'm taking pregabalin. <laughs> so what happened between Larry King and Jerry Lewis? I took you off track there. What do you mean? What, what I don't know what happened between Jerry Lewis. You had a story you were telling. Larry King was interviewing Jerry Lewis. Oh, he was interviewing Jerry Lewis, and Jerry Lewis was doing. Damn Yankees. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, I took it over from a, on Broadway, I took it over from a guy who did it marvelously, played the devil, Victor Garber. Oh, I love Victor Garber. But you see, hammer. you know Victor Garber, but how Dude, many people Titanic. watching right now know Victor Garber? My wife knows Victor Garber. Really? And a lot, a lot of people who like Broadway know Victor Garber because he was big on Broadway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Strangely, I do know Victor Garber. Yeah, but most people outside of you and your wife, pe people who are in New York who know Broadway probably right. know who Victor Garber was. You don't. I mean, they don't. Right. They're out there. And I'm trying to remember something he was in. He was in Alias with uh, what's I her? just told you he was in, in, uh, in um, not Hair, the other one, Godspell. He starred in Godspell yeah. as Jesus. He was in Titanic. Yes. He played a role in Titanic. Well, he played and the guy who other. helped build the ship. Who yes. Was, yeah. And a bunch of other things, which I can't remember. Yeah, but a, a constantly working actor. 
Yes. Yeah. But you, there are actors and actresses who you see all the time, and you don't really know their names. Mm -hmm. I know them, and then forget them promptly because I'm 84. But uh, I I know them because I'm interested in movies and who's in them. I always. In fact, a lot of times in movies, I don't even watch a movie. I just watch the credits. <laughs> in fact, I claim that if you put up a movie and you run like the first five, ten seconds of the credits, uh -huh. I can tell you what the movie is before the title ever comes on. Interesting. I knew there was a guy that used to do that with old movies. He was a, he was a director, I think, or a critic. And you could you could tell him a movie, and he would tell you how the movie starts, frame by frame. He would tell you the scene. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's really good. He was talking about the third man one time. He said, "Oh, and when it, when it opens with the with the courtyard," and I said, "Man, that's that's amazing." But I have no. No, no it's a picture of a zither play. A zither, right? The zither starts. Yes. Yeah, da, 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 oh, you, da, 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 you can do it too. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, one of my favorite. Movies. Yes. Yeah, but uh, you know, in the old days when they did a movie, it's RKO Radio Pictures, boom. Hal Wallace presents, boom. Uh, uh, then the name of the movie, Casablanca, you know, whatever. Well, that was a Warner Brothers picture, though. Uh, and th th that's how long it took for them to get through the titles. Now a movie starts, a whole bunch of things happen, somebody kills somebody else, somebody throws somebody off a building, and then the name of the movie comes on. If they even give you any time. Well, if they even get to it, yeah. Right. yeah. I bet Shecky was really good at that, huh? He must have known everything. I, I don't know. We never played that what? game. Oh, that would have been interesting. He, he was really good at any movie prior to oh, 1950. Mm-hmm. That was, was he better at that, that or animated stuff? Because I know he had a lot of animated Well, he uh, knew about animated stuff, but he knew more about just movies. And when it came to silent films, mm -hmm. I mean, he taught me everything I know about silent films. I wish I could do a th text fast enough to put up a slide, you know. You can you can play some uh, old style piano music under. Do you that. know how Alfred Hitchcock started in the movie business? I don't. He did the intertitles. The what now? The intertitles. That was, don't know that what. was the name for those titles of what the person was saying in a silent film, and they would oh. go to the the, the oh, slide, the, 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 and it would say you know whatever, right. and uh, he would, but he also would draw little cartoons on them. He was famous for that. You know, you called yourself a cartoon in our last uh, uh, gathering when we were t together last time. Um, do you still have the cartoons I did of you when we were working together? I don't you should, know. You should put those up one day. I don't know. I'm trying to remember if I have them still. I must somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know if you want them. I have them. Oh, I, I really enjoyed making my Oh, they were. Well, send me a bunch of them. Marjorie okay. would enjoy watching them because they were all insulting about me. Well, no, they were all realistic. They weren't. What do you mean? <laughs> they, were they were all realistic. You would you would say these things, and I I would make my little etching of of Alex Bennett and a little bubble talk bubble over your head, or you'd be moving your hand in some way. And I'm not a I can't draw for anything, but for some reason I was able to get you when you went on some some rant sometimes on the radio. I would just start sketching and and get that get that. Uh, Get that one slogan that you that you used over and over again. I, I remember "Belling the Cat" was always the, the slogan you used when you were talking well, about. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, a favorite term been. of mine because it. it I it, know, I know, but you also misused the "Belling the Cat" slogan. What do you mean I misused it? You didn't use it correctly. Well, it comes from an old story about a, about a mouse who. Uh, right. Uh, it, it, all the mice are being terrorized by this cat. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, "If you, uh, I'm going to go out there. I will bell the cat. I'll put a bell around his neck, so we'll mm -hmm. always know when he's out there. And uh, if I do it, you make me king of the of the mice." And they go, "Okay, fine." So one time he goes out there. There's no cat around or anything. He rings the bell, 
And then he runs back into the mouse hole and says, you know, I just belled the cat and I make him cake. So anything where you say you've done something which you really haven't done, but you're taking credit for it and using it to scare people at the same time is belling the cat. I don't know that that's the original story for belling the cat. That's All right, what, what I, do you know is the original that, story of belling I, the I, cat? I, I, don't, I don't remember, but I, I remember looking it up after you said it a bunch of times, and, and it was different from that. That certainly is a, a logical use of belling the cat. Well, that's the story. But I don't I know that the original was, was that. I, oh, I wait don't a minute. Remember. That wasn't a story I knew. That was a Warner Brothers cartoon. I'm oh. sorry. Oh, the Warner Brothers stole the Belling the Cat idea and used it. I think like, they used it in one of their cartoons, oddly enough. I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and it makes sense. But I don't think that's, that was the original use of the term Belling the Cat. But regardless, I know you used to use the term all the time. Used to get all frustrated. And I remember I used to draw this Alex Bennett face and a hand or a pointing at something, whatever, whatever you did. Um, it was good. I'll send you some of the Alex yeah. Bennett cartoons. I guess they're cartoons, the comics. What do you call it when it's a one-panel thing? It, it, that's a it's a one-panel cartoon. Is what they used to call cartoon. them. Most pa- most cartoons had four panels. Some had three, depended on who was doing it. Uh-huh. I think like Peanuts was always four, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and what about the the, the worst one ever, Family Circus? Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> that was always one. I and can't tell you funny. because I never looked at it. Okay, horrible. But weren't they a, horrible? There was a guy. The first guy I ever knew that I liked as a cartoonist when I was a kid was a guy named. Oh, I can't. I know. Yeah, you know, I can't remember Lynn Samuel's name earlier. Don't even say the name. If I say the name three times, she comes back to life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I can remember the name George Lichty. Uh huh. There was a guy who had a cartoon named George Lichty, and it was called Grin and Bear It. Okay? And uh, it was one panel. The kind of, who who did that? Who was the guy we all love? The, uh, Listen, Gary Larson. The Gary me, Larson, yeah. The king of the one panels, and brilliant. And also, uh, under, under known is B. Cliban. You know him? B... E. Cliban. I think I, it's. K- I think I know who it is, but I think you're maybe pronouncing it wrong. Well, uh, that's probably the case. But look up B. Cliban because he's got one panel uh, uh, cartoons like that that are so brilliant. You're, you're going to love them. Look it up when, when I you get often it. felt that the one panel cartoon was the ultimate comic strip. Now, I agree. It's not really I, a. Co- you can't call it a comic strip because it's not a strip. Oh, by the way. Uh, except if it appears in the New Yorker. Nothing funny about those. Sorry. You don't think so? I don't think so at all. I, I and I know, with you. I know there's, there's a selective I dis- process there. I disagree with you. There was except for the guy one by the name New of Virgil, York California. Uh, there was a guy by the name of Virgil Parch. Uh-huh. He called himself VIP. Okay? And he did a car- cartoons for the New Yorker. And the best one I ever saw was it was two buffalo standing uh-huh. there and one saying to the other, I think I just heard a discouraging word. <laughs> okay, that's all right. No, it's not Gary Larson funny. It's not B. Cliban funny. Gary Larson was very uh, uh, brainy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Very intellectual, you know. They weren't and, just... And- Stupid. And also the guy, the guy, I forgot what his name was. The guy that used to do the fold in in the Mad Magazine on the back page. Uh, yeah. I'm trying Remember to... that you used to fold. You used to fold the. Yeah. Uh, it was the, called a and foldy, it, and you would yeah, take it folded together, and it would become a totally different thing a than it completely was. different picture, and the words would change, and they'd make sense, and they would relate to the other picture. Just brilliant. Yeah, forgot what it's and, and and those things. If you have somebody says, "Okay, uh, I'm getting rid of all my old Mad magazines here," you Sheesh. wouldn't find one that didn't have a bent back page. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I remember times when Mad magazine would come out. I guess it was the '70s, and I used to go uh, to work. 
on the subway and I would read the Mad Magazine and people would look at me like, what are you, an infant reading comic books on the thing? And they were so funny and I would laugh out loud and people would think I was nuts because it was so funny. Well, I, uh, when I was younger, much younger than you. Okay, that young. Yeah. I bought some of the first Mad Comic books. Now, stupid me, I didn't save any of them. You know, if I had saved them and I had them right here today, they'd be worth tens of thousands of dollars, okay? But back then, they were just a comic book. Yep. And I wasn't that big into comic books. I think I read, uh, I, would, I, I would read Donald Duck. I don't know why, you know. And that wasn't even Disney doing it. That was a guy by the name of, uh, oh God, if Shecky were alive, I could call him and get the name. But uh, Barks, uh, Barks, Car Carl Barks, I think it was his name, did all the Donald Duck comic books. And they were much better than any other Donald Duck stuff, even the cartoons. Uh -huh. um, and I liked that man. That was big for me. And then I liked Mad Magazine, Mad Comics. It wasn't magazine. What happened was they got about maybe 15 issues in or something like that. And there were, there were a, lot of, a lot of pushback against comic books at the time. And they came out with the comics code and all that bullshit. Uh, and they didn't want to have to sign to it. Uh, so they figured what we'll do is we'll take it out of being a comic book. And they made Mad Magazine. And right. I remember the first Mad Magazine, like I have it right in front of me. I wish I did. Um, and it was terrific. It was you know, just you can get terrific. those online. Huh? They're available online. You oh, can read a whole, sure. a whole issue of every it one of them. It only remained good for a while. Then all the people... There was, was, a, there was a 10-year stretch where it was just great. At the beginning, it was brilliant. And then all of a sudden, it just became dopey, you know? Uh, a, a lot of the people like Will Elder, who was a cartoonist for them, and Jack Jack Davis, I think, was another guy who was a cartoonist for them. They all did that stuff. Al Jaffe, I think, did that. Uh, Jaffe did was another oh. one. They were all brilliant, and they did some brilliant work. I mean, it was just incredible. You know? Yeah. The lighter side of, loved it. Yeah. So anyway, I, I got all those comic books. Uh I remember I had a, I had a, uh, was it my cousin? Yeah, he was a concert pianist and his wife was a concert soprano. Mm. And uh, they would come over to the house and one day I'm over there and I'm reading my Mad Magazines. And she comes over and she says, what's that? I said, that's Mad Magazine. I read it, it's a comic book. She said, let me see it. And she started reading it. She started laughing. She yeah. went, this is great stuff. Just and these are very content. intellectual, snobby people. Uh -huh. He wouldn't ever find it funny. My cousin, the pianist, was a had a stick up his ass. Okay, it's too bad. But uh, she was cool, man. She really loved. It. She got any more? You said what? Me worry? <laughs> what me worry? <laughs> Remember Alfred E. Newman? Yeah, yeah. With his gap tooth. I remember when that face was around. It wasn't invented by Mad Magazine. It was an no, actual... No, I don't think so. It was a carnival thing or something? Well, I think it was something you actually bought at a store and then framed and put up on your wall because it was so funny. It was a picture, actual picture of a guy. Really? And it said, what me worry? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up Alfred E. Newman and B. Laban and the Mad Magazine series. B. Laban. I'm trying to remember. I know, that, I know who you're trying to refer to, but I can't remember what I thought his name was. Sometimes you would see these names and you would pronounce them your own way. No, I, th I think it was B. Cliban, K-L-I-B-A-N. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, it is. American cartoonist, B-K-L-I-B-A-N. Okay, does it say what he did? Born in Norwalk, uh, Norwalk Connecticut, Cliban studied at the Pratt Institute, but flunked out. Uh, he became a Playboy cartoonist. Uh-huh. And uh, he, he did stickers, mugs, calendars, T-shirts, a lot of different Sounds stuff. Sounds like Donald Trump. 
They often contain dysmorphic drawings of nude figures in extremely in unlikely environments. Very funny stuff, though. Very heady. Well, I'll have to look him up. Yeah. But uh, everybody else, that's your homework assignment. Go look up B. Kleban. K L E B A N? L I B A N. Kleban. K L I B A N. B A N. Right. Okay. It's, it, first name is Bernard, but he always went by B. Kleban. Yeah. K L I B A N. From Connecticut. But flunked out of the Cooper Union. What? You he flunked out of the Cooper Union. Out of Cooper Union? Yeah, I thought you said Pratt. Pratt and Cooper Union. Oh, he got knocked out of two of the better schools in yeah, the exactly. New York area. Exactly. And what did he do? He went on to make funny comics. Good hey, listen, you know, I mean, uh, I, I had a college professor when I was studying broadcasting for about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. when it was parents night at the college and my parents came by was very happy to tell my parents your son will never make it what in college or anywhere no, in broadcasting oh really huh. he was my broadcasting what? teacher he by later, the time you were college age you were already already on the radio well I was already on the radio but I was going to college to learn it see if I could learn more uh -huh. you know about it well, you taught them, didn't you? Well, I mean, after a while, I quit college because I thought, I'm doing it already. Yeah, you know, right. I could teach them. Hmm. And Where's plus, your college professor what they were now? Teaching, what they were teaching in those days, here, this will really get to you. What they were teaching is, well, this week, we're going to do radio plays. Hmm. And I went, hey, don't do radio plays on radio anymore. What are we studying radio plays for? Well, I can't complain because I taught broadcasting at my alma mater, so, and and all of that is absolutely useless information now. So, it, it, it constantly evolves, it constantly yes. changes. Yes. But by that time, there were no there were no radio plays on radio. Uh -huh. You know, and I loved radio plays, but I knew that they didn't do them anymore. They don't even do them on the internet. No, well, what happened is it, at that point, radio had to compete with television, so it completely mm -hmm. morphed into something else. And basically what it did, it wound up being radio stations that played records. Or screamed at people. Or screamed at people, but not that much back then. No, not that Talk much. shows were different back then. Well, yeah. Records was easy. It was cheap and it well, was records easy. Records were easy and you're using somebody else's talent. Mm-hmm. And if you select the right bunch of other people's talent, you'll have a radio station that has higher ratings than the other guy. Well, not anymore. But anyway, so when, I, when that happened, but my, my, my teacher, by the way, you, I can show you my teacher if you want to. Uh, go watch Woody Allen's Take the Money and Run. Oh, I love that movie. And, and it was an, the first, I think the first Woody Allen movie that wasn't like found footage, like what's up yeah. Tiger Lily, okay? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, his name was uh, uh, Henry Leff, and he uh, played Woody Allen's father. He wears a, they try to disguise himself, so he wears a nose with eyeglasses, you know. Like because he didn't want to be known as. Yeah, and that was, that was that's how far he went. Well, that's something. Something, but I don't think you could say he was more successful than I was. Probably not. You know, and when I went back to work in San Francisco, one day I went on the air and told the exact story I'm telling you now. And I said, I want to tell you that the name of that teacher was Henry Leff. And Henry, if you're listening, eat your words. Because here I was on San Francisco radio, morning show, whole thing, the whole thing. to anything. Huh? He'll never amount to anything in his business. He told me that's what he told my parents. You should find another line of work. He'll never, he'll never succeed in radio. I had a teacher do the same thing in high school. Told my parents. Told my parents that. I'll bet you if you talk to anybody who's really popular and good, okay, and good, whether in radio or movies or whatever, they will be able to tell you almost an identical story like that. Probably. Some teacher Probably. who said they sucked. 
And that was the impetus for them to become what they became, to become successful. What Was that really a, a, a fuel for you? Uh, it didn't hurt. And I remembered it enough that I mentioned it on San Francisco radio. Said did I went to San Francisco bring it up City when, College. When, what? Did you, were you with your parents when he said this to you, to them? Yeah. And, and, and did, after you left the school that day, did they bring it up again? No. Oh, okay. No, because my father, father just said, come on, Alex, have a, have a glass of whiskey. My father was a musician. He was uh -huh. in show business and he was happy that I was in show business. Even if I wasn't big at that time, you know, I was just working at KTIM in San Rafael or whatever. So, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. God, this happens. I, I hate when that happens because I, I enjoy this. It's, it has serves two functions. It gives me 25 minutes of programming I don't have to do, okay? That's and, my function in life. And it gives me 25 minutes I can spend with you that I like. That I don't normally spend. Yeah? That I like, yes. So, and and what what amazes me is, so often I come here with no nothing to say, nothing that I'm thinking of, and yet we get something out of it. So that's nice. All I know is one day with uh, let me just do this quickly, and then we got to go. But uh, I had uh, Lori Thompson. I was doing a thing with Lori Thompson, and we started on something, and we wanted to start it in one place. And then we went to another place, and then we went to another place, and by the end of the 25 minutes, we were discussing diarrhea. Okay, well, I'll and, stop and so you before you get to that. that. That's what, well, that's what I do. I just like to have a conversation. I don't want to interview you. Yeah, but do that so, with so, her. So, diarrhea. Uh, Albert, uh, what, where did you first start out in radio? It's pointless. It doesn't matter. Yeah, None of that. I mean, all an interview should be, and I told this to, when I was teaching, told students, the only thing you should do when you're doing an interview is hold a conversation. You know? Don't sit there thinking about what's my next question I got to ask. And don't forget the plug. You have to plug what, they're, yeah. what they want. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is a young punk named Albert Reynoso. I say that because he's 24 years younger than me, something like that. So what? 23 younger than me. You're, you're you're just as young as I am right here. Oh, yeah, that's, I really look it. That's all I'm at. I said right here, right here, right here. Oh, Don't yeah, forget right to look here. up. It's right LeBron, here. Everybody. Is it right yes. there? Yes. Anyway. Hey, take care, okay? I'm going to send you your comics. Okay. All right. Now in its 10th year, this is Gadnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hmm, let me see here. Where do I go here? Oh, there we go. There's my camera. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? I have a lot of it tonight. I didn't, uh, I'm trying to get things to go right here, and everything goes a little off. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing fine. And how are you all? Uh, I think it's time to bring in our people from the citizen panel. There are only three of them, but they're three very good ones. Okay, so let me go admit all. And we will see here who we have. And there they are, folks. Uh, there is uh, Charlie Wallace, and there's uh, Kevin, and there's Josh Wheeler, and there is uh, uh, me, <laughs> and then there's... Um, uh, Jeff Stein will be joining us here in a moment. Yes, there he is. Okay, uh, and uh, we're uh, we're all here and we're all assembled. Uh, I guess it would be foolish of me to ask how many of you watched the debate tonight. Um, did I get not me? Huh? Not me. You didn't watch it? No. Why? It's a waste of time. You know what it's going to be. Well, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe it would and maybe it wouldn't. Um, let's see how everybody felt about what they saw, and then we can report back to you, Charlie. Okay. Because I thought if anybody was going to watch it, it would be you. I haven't watched the debate in 30 years. Oh, okay. So what did you expect that it would be? They will 
ignore the questions that the moderator asked and just go and spew their their talking points. Well, uh, that was at least on Trump's part, I think. Would most people agree with me that Trump never asked the question that was asked him? Yeah. Yeah. They asked him about fentanyl four times, and four times he didn't answer it. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, he uh, he didn't uh, really answer. Uh, uh, he would take a... He would. T they would ask him a question like, uh, uh, "Do you support the people who attack the, uh, you know, the Capitol?" And then he no, would he turn around and answer a question that had just been asked five <laughs> minutes earlier. Yeah. He he wouldn't directly answer the question. Every time they asked him to directly answer it, he wouldn't directly answer it. Yeah. But that said, how do you feel Biden was doing tonight? Or Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he did a very good job at all. Yeah, it, it, what did what did you what did you think, Josh? You watched it, I'm sure. Yeah, I watched. Uh, Kevin was trying to talk after that, but uh, it's not a good format, you know, for him. He's not a very good, quick on his feet public speaker like that. He really never has been. You know, he's always had that kind of hesitancies and things like that when he talks um you know sometimes i'm like that or whatever sometimes a lot of other people are like that it really doesn't have anything to do with your ability to be able to do certain things but you know he does have that and okay. it was fairly exaggerated today you know and you know i was just talking to kevin a little bit ago i mean honestly between trump being you know, the literal just piece of work that he is. And, you know, the issues with Biden and the faith people have in him and the fact that they're not able to look at whatever happens to be wrong with him and just say, I don't care. There's no possible way we could put this lunatic, fascist person back in charge of our country. I mean, they, they still do not recognize that threat. Between those two things, I just don't, it's very sad. I mean, the debate to me was just, it was very sad because they didn't get any questions answered. There was not a lot of policy that was discussed. You know, Trump was the ass clown that he normally is. Biden is not able to perform very well in these situations. You know, I think in a room alone <laughs> with an intercontinental ballistic missile on the way here, I think that he would know what to do. You know, but people don't, they're not, they don't think about that. These debates are all about optics and how somebody looks. And he looks old because he is old, you know? And I he, mean, and he, I hate to say you know, this. He, I mean, he, that's the facts. You can't change that. Well, I hate to say this. He also acted old. Yeah. You yeah, know, right. and, and, and right. uh, here, here's the, pro okay, first of all, all day long they kept running clips of the other debate back mm -hmm. four years ago mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I looked at it and I went well if Biden's like he was t on these clips tonight yeah he'll ace the test okay right. unfortunately mm -hmm. it was like night and day yeah I mean he can he can stand and and give a prepared speech like he did in Normandy I saw a couple of them they're fine you know people mm -hmm. were happy with the State of the Union thing but this kind of format across from Trump is, is not good. Yeah, but when he did it, four, as I say, when he did it four years ago, mm -hmm. he really looked pretty much uh, with it. Yeah. Tonight, he didn't look with it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the most taxing and stressful job mm. in the world. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I think, I think he's done a great disservice to Democrats and to America by deciding to run again. I think it's yeah. pure ego yeah. that made well, him run. Well, for I both don't know of them. If it's that, but you know, I mean, look, if they want to, I don't. I mean, they they can take a look at it in some ways. Mm -hmm. They should, but their Democrats are never really willing to do what needs to be done. I mean, even when they do things, even when they finally get there, then they still do something stupid. You know, I mean, if they really wanted to pull some kind of master stroke out or whatever, he would say, fine, I'm not going to run anymore, and they would go get someone young and energetic with a family, and they would be like, see, this guy's an ass clown, and you've been bitching about this guy the whole time, and now we just gave you a new option. But that's not what they would do. They would run like Kamala Harris, you know? 
They would just take the most hated person by the other side in the world and replace them with the second most hated person. You know, I mean, so, I mean, because, like, they feel like they owe it to or, or, or some garbage like that. You know, like, now I'm willing to accept it, but that's what I'm saying is other people won't. I mean, if you told me Biden could get reelected and get sworn in and drop dead at the, at the stage, I would be fine with that happening as opposed to having Trump. I have no fear of our government changing hands in that form whatsoever. But most people probably don't think the way that I do. Well, you know, there are, believe it or not, there are never Trumpers and there are never Bideners, but they're never either one. That's a very high group of people right now. People are not satisfied with the choice that's being handed them. They don't want a rerun of what went on four years ago. They'd like to be given a new set of choices. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and I now, but I mean, the question I have, okay, this is the direct question. We, we can say, okay, he's not very good at debating right now because he had a stutter when he was growing up and things get worse as you get older. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was very pronounced tonight to the point at which uh, <coughs> Trump um, made light of it at one point. Because that's the kind of person he is. Huh? Because that's the kind of person that he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the fact is that he has a, a profound stutter, uh, or better yet, a, a pronounced stutter, pronounced stutter, um, that, uh, you know, that, that uh, makes him sound like he isn't with it. But, you know, mm-hmm. what you're trying to do when you're speaking and you're running for president is instill confidence in the people who are supposed to vote for you. Mm-hmm. Now, the question I have is a very direct one judging by his performance tonight biden's performance tonight do you feel confident no no i don't i'm not confident but i I, I don't have another choice so i'm with i'm with josh though i i i i don't feel confident but i'm with josh I, I would be okay with him being sworn in, and then after he swore in, if he dropped dead. I mean, I, it's, God forbid that doesn't happen, but I would rather have that than Trump any day. Yeah, well, yeah, but, I mean, uh, forget about Trump, okay? We know we don't like him, and we know what he presents. Yep. But do you feel confident in Joe Biden? You know, I don't think he's no. got it right now. I mean, and look— you know, we got a guy here, Jeff, okay, and I was going to yes. ask Jeff this, because Jeff has gone through a situation in which his mental capabilities have been challenged, okay? He had a stroke, uh, and occasionally, if you listen closely, you can see it creep up, you know, the, the effects of it. Um, do you think that maybe somewhere along the line, Joe Biden's had a stroke? I mean, theoretically, yes, but practically, uh, who knows? Yeah, I don't see any assessment of that. I don't either. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I see know assessment of somebody that's getting older. Well, yeah. see, I know what it's like not to be able to get your words together and to say stuff mm. because I do it all the time now. But you it know. happens when you get into your sixties too. You start yeah. getting that way. It, you don't have to be 82 or 83 or however old you are or however old Joe Biden is. I'm in my 60s, and sometimes I get lost in what I'm going to say. Okay, but let's say, like, you're not a, you know, you're all very politically savvy, and you know that uh, 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 Trump is a clown, and you know that uh, uh, a Biden is certainly a man with a great deal of uh, of, of history of of doing the things he has to do to be president of the United States. Uh, but knowing all that, uh, what about the person who isn't as savvy? How would they look at those two people tonight? That's the question. Because they're not playing to us. We're going to vote for Biden no matter what, right? That's right. That's you know, right. But there are those people in the middle, and now they're looking at these two guys. And I have to admit, Trump looked a bit healthy tonight, you know? He was able to answer all the questions, just not the right questions. Well, he kept answering. He, he, he had his own agenda, and he wasn't going to veer from that agenda. So no matter what question, I think he was asked, what was the question he was asked? 
ask some question. Hmm. They uh, ask them about, about fentanyl in this country. Four times they asked him. Did they? I didn't and hear four that. Four times he never answered it. Well, and, you did that it, with a lot of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. That's right, Kevin. Yeah. It was. Uh, I lost track at seven. I was trying to keep track, but he, he didn't answer a lot of questions. No, he didn't. Yeah. He just kept going back to other questions or just going off the rails. He went off the court, off the rails immediately at question four. That's well, right. he does Go what back. he he does what a lot of politicians do, and I've I've had the experience of I- I- interviewing politicians, and they do exactly that. You know, I will ask them a direct question, and then they will answer another question, not even a question I asked. I'll get to that in a moment, but first, and then he hopes that he runs out the clock enough that you forgot that you asked him the other question. You know? But I don't think he does that on purpose. I think he just does it because he's just answering what he wants to answer, and yeah. he doesn't care about the question. Right. Yeah. right. You can ask him if the sky is blue, and he'll tell you every reason why the sky is gray. Yeah. Like, right. He came back and then with change a, it to blue. one line tonight I mean, red. a complete lie. I never had a, I never had sex with anybody, you know, with that one. <laughs> uh, he, I think you said he never had sex with a porn star. Never had sex with a porn star, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, the porn star says you did, you know. You paid her off. You pay, and rather, what were you paying her off for? Yeah, what was the $130,000 for? Just to look at her? I could go for $2, get a Playboy magazine. Yeah, buy the porn film, you know. Or the, yeah, right. Did they ask that question? Because I missed about 20 minutes or so. Somebody came to the door, and uh, I didn't hear any of those. Yeah. Did they ask those questions? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, well, it was brought uh, up. I no, it was brought. It, it was so brought up by. It. it was brought up by uh, uh, by by Biden, who said, you know, oh, here's, here's okay. a guy who's gone out with a, you know, had sex with a porn star, cheated on his wife, blah blah blah. Oh, good for him. He listed all the things that he. Well, he wasn't quite out of it, so he was still bringing up stuff. No, he was he bringing up stuff, but I don't know if that helps. That just angers the Trump people. Well, he deserved yeah. to be angry. Yeah. I mean, he deserved to, to jump back at him. I was kind of proud of him for doing some of that because he was getting pounded by, by him and his bullshit. Yeah, and, well, the biggest... You know, I, he, it, needed, he, need, he didn't need to stand there and take all that bullshit. Here is one of the most interesting things that Trump said. Yeah. Trump always over says stuff. To begin with, he always uses the following phrase, and everybody knows that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, the whole thing when he started talking about how the vets hate him and everything else, that was just such bullshit. And I was everybody about ready to knows throw that. Throw rocks through my TV. And everybody yeah. knows that. And every general knows that. And I was about ready to throw shit at my TV. I'm going, what the hell are you talking well, about? Well, here's dude? the one that got me. Okay. Uh, think, of the, think of the logic of this. Uh, if, if you let uh, Joe Biden continue to be your president, he will raise your taxes by four times. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now, wait, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is, what is the average tax now? It's somewhere around 28%, isn't it? So if yeah, he does it four more. times, he's going to be able to raise it beyond 100%. Yeah. I mean, all right, I think he means in four different ways because then he kind of explains some of the ways. But right. that's what I'm saying. It's just not a quick response like that with the way his mind works and mm-hmm. the way that he talks is not... Mm-hmm a good setup you know i mean so you know i mean if you got if you know if i were debating someone i i don't really necessarily want to do it uh in that format live like that you know i i am a writer i personally would much rather you ask me anything and give me 10 minutes and i'll write something down to you that's great yeah no but if i had to answer it in person um you know, by speaking, I even think I'm a little clueless sometimes or whatever. Because I, I, I just, I don't, I mm. write. I don't, you know, but when I write, I can be like, mm, how do I want to say that? And that's not it. That's not it. That's not, I mean, you, know, you can't do that when you talk. I you mean, can only you speak once. You can, yeah, you can fix what yeah, you write. Yeah. You know, that, that, the writing, it's a good idea, actually. That's a that that that's a great suggestion because I think if I was on stage, oh, oh, there, what do you mean? All, all people running for president have to fill out essays? Yeah, why not? Yeah, but <laughs> I, I think if I was on stage and Trump had said something nasty about my family, I wouldn't look too good because I'd be on top of him beating the fuck out of him. I was you waiting know? for that one. 
Yeah, yeah. I was. Well, yeah, I was. Uh, tr I'm surprised well, Trump well, didn't. At uh, one over. point, Biden got very mad at him, especially oh, when yeah. he, you know, when it kind of came to his sons and so on and so forth. He, yeah, he had every, every right to. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Trump had no right to go there. None. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't go after Trump's kids. Yeah. But I think we will all have to admit that Biden did not look great tonight. Nope. You know. But I agree with, with Josh when he talks about the fact that I would hate to think that a presidency is won or lost over a debate. It's only the first one, too. Yeah. You know, it's only one of in four years. So we got to give him a little more credit. Let's see what happens in the next debate. Well, I don't think he's going to do much better. I think there's a certain impairment that that uh, Joe has that doesn't play well to the average person watching. I don't think there'll I be think another Josh's, debate. You don't Josh's think? suggestion's great. Let him write it out. Yeah, well, you don't think there'll be another debate, uh, Kevin? I don't think. I don't think so. I don't think there should. Well, I don't see what it proves. It doesn't prove anything. It's a shit show right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, there's Tony. Tony, did you see the uh, shit um, show tonight? I got to tell you something, Alex. I'm not a violent guy, okay, by nature. I couldn't stand Trump anymore. Oh, the, we, we've the, kind of taken you for being a mass murderer to be. No, but you know, you know, did you hear what he said? That he goes. The troops don't even like. He just lied. You know, I'm going to be honest. I'm not just saying this for shock. I really would kick Trump's ass. Like, if I was younger and he was the same age as me, you'd want to smack him around, really. He's like he's like that rich kid whose father got him everything. It's like, yeah. he's just a bullshit, bro. And he's nasty. I turned yeah. to him. I couldn't take him anymore. My brother's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to watch Better Call Saul. I said, I can't take this guy anymore, Trump. You, you know the you know the news just reported Tony that somebody threw their TV out the window in Queens. That was you, right? No, that's my brother paid for it. So he probably wouldn't let me do it. Now. It's like it's against the wall. But Alex, is it? Did you watch the? I couldn't take him anymore. Never watched Trump. most of it. I, I in the beginning, I found it hard to take because of Biden. I felt that Biden was a little on the, you know. He looked like he was doddering to me. Like I think well. he started to do better as time went on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he needed, be, he needed to be warmed up a little bit. Yeah, but still, he had the, and I've had it happen to me where you just get your brain farts, you know. Yep. And and I felt I felt bad for him, but I don't think that we should have to decide our presidency based upon something like this, you know. And uh, I, I I just I just think that maybe TV is the worst thing that's happened to elections because. Ever since the Kennedy-Nixon debates, it's all changed. You know, Nixon lost that one because he didn't have the right, good makeup on. Yep. He looked pasty white. A lot of it is optics. Exactly. And Kennedy came off as, you know, good looking and suave and sleek and everything mm -hmm. else. Uh, and that was the first time, I think, in present history that I can remember. How about you, Josh? That, that it really was... It was pretty much a, 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 a presidency was won or lost based on a debate. Although we, I don't think we were doing much of them before that. I think early yeah. on like that, you know, they probably carried a lot more weight because people had never really had that as part of their uh, menu of things they could use to evaluate people, you know. Yeah. Of that, And then when they came along... I think that it was uh, a new thing, and you know, people probably said, "Oh, this is great!" You know, now they we can see them here, and they got to answer these questions and everything. So I think it was pretty heavy there. I, I think that it's faded a lot, if for no other reason that we've also just gotten to the point where, you know, people just are going to vote for who they're going to vote for, and you really can't change anyone's mind. Uh, you know, anymore. It doesn't seem like we have much open-mindedness about candidates and things like that. I mean, you know, our, our, it's really gotten so bad that, you know, re Republican Party politics or anybody, I mean, they, they literally, you could pretty much put anyone as the nominee of their party. It doesn't matter if they hated him yesterday or what they've done. I mean, a paroled mass murderer could 
could be their nominee and they'd be finding ways to say, well, you know, I mean, he was just going through a tough time and, you know, and, you know, and all that, but he's learned a lot from it and then they would just go on, you know? Mm -hmm. it, so you can't even really change anyone's mind anymore. So I don't think they matter as much, you know, as they would have in, you know, like 1960 or 64, 68, whatever, because television is not, it's obviously not new anymore. Now you have the social media and YouTube and all that constant stuff. <clears throat> I mean, you can get information on presidential candidates, you know, any second of the day, day or night, right? You know? I mean, from your computer or from anywhere. So I don't think it's as important now as it was then, other than when you have things like tonight where it's just so bad all the way around that nobody's happy with any of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to me, like to me more than anything, Biden, whatever, this is a bad day for America. Yeah. Like, period. I'm just sad because it's a, it's a shit day for the United States of America that... In the last couple of years, this Trump clown show horseshit has allowed our politics to recede so far out to sea that I don't, you know, no, we can't see the shore anymore. I mean, it's just, it's so bad that we have to sit through a debate like that and listen to this garbage from everybody instead of having two people running for president telling us what they think. I mean... We got somebody who's too old and somebody who's, you know, a clown and a fascist. And I mean, I, I just don't, I don't get it. And I don't understand how people can't see it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I told these guys the other night that it's so bad and you know it because, you know, Hitler didn't sneak in the back door in Germany, okay? He didn't have to. You know why? Because they opened the front door and they let him walk right in. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. and it and like I and I just look around, and I see so many people mm -hmm. accepting things that are ridiculous from someone like Trump. You know, because they're they've done this great job at, at at tearing down someone like Biden. You know, who's been a good public servant his whole life. You know, it, even at the fact that he's old now, that doesn't change everything that he's ever done and been able to do. You know, but they convince people of it, and they get people hating each other. And, and this debate didn't do anything to fix any of those problems, right? It just made every single one of them worse. So what, what service did it do our country tonight? It did, it did nothing. I think it, you're right. right. I think it you're did. right. It made everything worse. Yep. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't see anything at all tonight that was fixed. And like I said, so maybe they should... Maybe they should get together in the Democratic Party and just, like I said, just pull the master stroke. And they should just say, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to do something crazy and we're going to offer an alternative and we're going to tear Trump down over it and put things back together. And they could go find themselves a nice, moderate Democrat and, and go from there, you know? Mm -hmm. But like I said, they're so stupid that they won't do it. I mean, you know, they would, they would go find someone... That is an easy target. You know, I mean, somebody, you, you know, just like, help. well, we've accused the Republican Party of putting up with Trump and standing up for Trump and making excuses for Trump. But I think at the same time, the Democrats are just as guilty for not sitting Joe Biden down and going, Joe, you're not running. Period. He, you're not running, has Joe. The right to run, but I cannot disagree with you that they have the right to also say, you're allowed to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. We're allowed to do what we want to do. Yeah, and here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, make your decision from there. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I can't argue with that. I think, if, I think if Biden stepped aside, probably the most likely Democrat that would win would be Gavin Newsom. Oh, I think Gavin Newsom would win uh, because uh, what's his name? The guy, the mouth from the south. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. Was uh, huh? Marco Rubio, DeSantis, no. No, 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 I'm talking about uh, the guy who was Clinton's uh, press secretary. Oh. Uh, uh, you know, the crazy, Getting, the Cajun. Yeah, uh, what's, oh, what's his name? James uh, Carville? Uh, Carville, James Carville. James Carville. Yes. James Carville said mm -hmm. in an interview with somebody, I can't remember who, that mm -hmm. anybody who was in his 50s 
that ran against Donald Trump could mm-hmm. win without breathing heavy. I mean, I, I, he's, he's dead on you said most of the time, Carlos. Right? No, no, but the, the point is, he's right, you know, yeah. that, that these guys are just too old, period. And I'm an old guy saying they're too old. When I tell you they're too old, they're too mm-hmm. old, okay? Uh, and that, that if anybody ran against Trump, who was younger, in his 50s, say, he'd just walk away with it. He wouldn't even have to work hard for it. Mm-hmm. And I think right. that's true. I think if Newsom ran, uh, he would probably walk away in, a, in, in an instant with the He's presidency. Smart. Got good optics. Well, he looks good. No. He's got good optics. But more than that, he wouldn't let Trump get away with anything. No, he just spouts the spout. Like you know, it, it, you know, it talking when he talks to the media and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he would have made a great candidate. But woulda, coulda, shoulda, we were stuck with the, you know, the bro- the girl we brought to the dance. I, I think a lot of people were afraid. Also, that Biden's going to die in office if he gets elected, and nobody wants Kamala Harris. Well, that's the other mistake they have made. They should have never. They should have never brought Kamala Harris back in, nope. because people are saying, "Well, what if he dies? Ooh, Kamala Harris? Oh, yeah, no." Kamala Harris is not terrible, but she ain't no great shakes either. She was a it, train wreck in, in when she was DA in San Francisco. She was a train wreck in, in as the top law officer in California, and then he picked her, and it's scary. Yeah, so. but anyway, the fact is that if you pick somebody like Gavin mm-hmm. Newsom, everybody would have felt very calm and collected with that idea. Yeah, they would have been okay if he, uh, if he got sick off a bit. Hey, you know, we're fine. We're in good hands. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, but, and you know what's funny, Alex, mm-hmm. and even to Josh and you guys, how America, I actually think, I and mean, this is no secret, it's like they want the fascists in the White House. That's that's your United States. That This is the United States that came out of the woodwork. They exist, and they're saying, hey, listen, we never really left. We just hid for a while, but we're still here. And we still don't like, you know, certain values. And and Trump knows that. And that's why nothing shocks me anymore. I mean, I can't even believe that he's up there running for president after January 6th. Well, there's always been a fascist element in this country. I think Josh can yeah. probably go back in history. And, uh, you know, I, I saw a, uh, what was it, on, uh, on YouTube today, a, a documentary on a... Um, a, a rally that was held at Madison Square Garden here in New York in the late 1930s, maybe early 1940s. Oh, for Hitler, right? Not for Hitler. Who it was a fascist on? movement. It was basically a fascist movement. It looked just like they weren't wearing swastikas. Right. But when was that, Josh? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, I don't know the date. It might, it might have been after the war, actually. That's but scary. these guys, these guys, they drew quite a crowd. Yeah, was, I mean that's scary to think about. Like they, they exist. They just don't. You know, he gave them like he gave them approval to come out. Really. Well, what he's done is given he he's given the those elements in this country a sense of permission. Yeah. You yeah. know. You know, forty years ago or thirty years, ago, David got elected to office. You know, a grand wizard. If that isn't what I mean, that's sort of what you're talking about. I can't believe that somebody would elect this guy. But he got elected. Yeah, but he's going to let all those guys who went uh, and attacked the Capitol, who have been found guilty, he's going to just let them all go. But he complains about all these elements that come in up from South America. Most of them are families, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah. But there are, yeah, there are a few. I'm sure you're going to find a few that are going to come into our country and do something bad. You no. know, no question about Not it. But hundreds we have pe- of thousands of them, like he said. He's got them coming, like you know. Yeah, but we here. have people here in this country who are Americans who rape people yeah. and rob from people, and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. So it isn't, you know. You get a lot. I think the of- problem with Joe is that he lost four years by not running right after Obama. He lost his four years then. Yeah. But he, he, he couldn't. He, just died. What's that? Yeah, yeah. that's because his son died. But that's where he lost his four years. Yeah, yeah, that is where he lost his. And four years. he he <clears throat> had a good head on his shoulder then, and he could have taken over then. Mm-hmm. And that's where he, you know, I, I saw 
quite a few interviews with that guy and he had his head on his shoulders and he was he was on a roll at that time yeah and i think he could have beat anybody yeah but you got to you know yeah. Kevin, you still got to take into effect that despite his age he already took down trump once he took him down but he took him down because of what was going on what were you what were you saying brian Sorry, that means, uh, oh, okay. Okay. I can't Sorry, hear. I'm out. Oh. Sorry. Oh. I mute. What was that noise? I'm 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 on a call from work right now. Oh, okay. I'm on a call from work right now. Okay. So. No, well, uh, put yourself on mute and then. Yeah, okay. I know I know the routine. I'm yeah. new to this, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're, we'll wait for you. Nobody oh, talk until call. he gets back. <laughs> yeah, I can put you on this call. It's really fun. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. But anyway, um, you know, I mean, you're right. He should have he should have run a few years earlier. Uh, and the fact that he won at his age is amazing. You know. Yeah, uh, if you look at it, if he did win, though, this would have he would have gone in his eight years. We probably wouldn't have seen yeah. Trump. Yeah. Would have, could have, should at this point, but we probably wouldn't have seen Trump, and we wouldn't be sitting here in this. Well, mess. to be honest with you, I've never been. There'd be a youngster up yeah. at this point, you I've, know. I've never been. We'd that be big. looking at a fifty or sixty year old. I've never been that big a fan of of Joe Biden's because of what went on with uh, what's her name, who we went up and told all the stories about Clarence Thomas and yeah, the way he, he yeah, and the way he I treated her. That, but in the end, he was still he was still pretty good in his in his work. For most of the most yes I mean, but i you know fucked up parts. sometimes there are things that so piss me off i don't like you ever no, again it. you know and and it wasn't uh, wasn't that wasn't terrific what he did you know? no I, I get it you know and uh what was her name again uh anita bryant anita, 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 anita bryant, bryant? No. No. no no not uh, anita bryant <laughs> anita hill anita hill yeah. yeah what he did to her i mean it wasn't just Start that singing. that that they didn't believe her that would be bad enough but they vilified her and he was one of the ones vilifying her you know and i'm supposed to come back and like that you know um but you know he, he he's he, you got to go with the girl you brung to the dance and mm -hmm. uh, in and that case change it, too in that case it's uh it's um uh, our our dear president uh, Joe Biden, uh, no. you know, um, um, and and it, it was also funny. I mean, when they bring him, listen. The one thing that Trump cannot argue is that he was he's a convicted felon. Yeah, that he, he is. You know, but he goes, no, I'm not. I I wasn't guilty. Well, you know, that's what every criminal says. Oh, in a different way, huh? The jury saw it a different exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. You know, and uh, well, go go to your uh, do your um, you know your um, uh, appeals, and if they fail, they fail. Yeah. Now, I'm going to bet you. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong. You can call me tomorrow night and say, Alex, you were wrong, but I'll bet you tomorrow the Supreme Court comes out with their decision about Donald Trump. And, and, and as to whether he has a, a, a serious case of, uh, of uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 presidential mm -hmm. immunity. Um, Another it, question he didn't answer. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. He did not answer the question about uh, your opponent is standing right next to you, and you said that you could be able to take him out if you wanted to. What do you feel about that? And he just went on about, I think he went into the Hamas thing. <laughs> See? That's yeah. how, how you answer a question. You divert yeah. the question. He basically was saying, would you take out Biden? Yeah. Wow. And he's standing right there. I didn't hear that part of it, but that might have been when I left and came in here because I had to get ready, yeah. you know. It would be more likely that if he believes in presidential immunity, then Biden could take him out because he's the one that's president. Yeah, he's right there. Well, he's... you know, if Biden were the kind of corrupt president he rebuttal. says he was, <laughs> Biden could just, uh, you know, give Hunter Biden a reprieve. Take him out with his laptop. 
Although is that a is that a federal offense against Hunter Biden? I think it is. If it's not a federal situation, you can't give out, you know. No, he could have pardoned. He said, he had to promise not to. No, yeah. he 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 didn't have to promise. He did promise. No, he didn't have to, but he did. He did. He promised yeah. it. Much to his credit. He was not going to commute his sentence, wasn't going to pardon him or anything. Yeah. Hmm. Right. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, it, it's really, uh, but I agree with Josh. We live in sad times. Yep. You know. Yep. We're about to vote away our democracy in yep. November. That's well, what we're going to do, it looks like. That's about what's at stake, too. We but, aren't. It's going to be. What do you mean it's going to be? I mean, we well, country. there are certain people that are going to try and vote that away. Yes, you're right. Well, you know, but the latest thing. I don't consider us, you know, I don't consider we are going to vote it away. There are certain people out there that are going to try and do that. Yes. Well, you know, the latest thing that happened today was that in Oklahoma, the uh, superintendent of schools said that he is going to make it uh, the law that you have to teach the Ten Commandments and... Louisiana. No, no, no. This wasn't Louisiana. This was Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That he was going to make sure that everybody had to learn the Ten Commandments and they were going to teach religion in schools. Yeah, we talked about that earlier and I said I said to Josh, I said, you know, this is, this is the, the, the exact opposite of what they're doing. They're, they're, they're saying government would... Uh, is is here it is Does it work Against the, First Amendment. the government is forcing you with religion in schools yet they don't want the government in their life right talk mm. it through your ass Both sides. <laughs> it's got to be against i went to i went to a private school for oh, eight really? years really i was brainwashed in the, in, in catholic mm. and then i went to a public school but they talk nothing about the Ten Commandments yeah, in never, public school. Yeah, New York schools, Alex. We ne- I never went to Catholic school. I went public my whole thing. We never. So had church it. and state needs to be separated. Hey, well, continue to, to be separated. For the holy yeah. Should have nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh, an and they're forcing that down there. And mm-hmm. well, you know, the all of a sudden they're getting this idea. This is a mm-hmm. Christian nation. I don't know where they. I'm went. sorry. You know, it's not. Yep. You know, I I don't see how they're going to get away with it. It's, I mean, it's, it's not the separation of church and state in the First Amendment. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I mean, you've got a Supreme Court. Yeah, well, you know mm-hmm. that, that it could happen. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't think any Supreme Court could logically say that you have to have the Ten Commandments in every classroom in your state, and yet. Mm-hmm. You don't know with this uh, with the Supreme Court. No. I think I Josh last night was saying that a couple of them li- that we don't like, like Gorsuch, probably would not vote for being able to have the Ten Commandments in school. Weren't you saying that last night, uh, Josh? That you felt that they were a little more principled than we believe? Yeah, I think. Yeah, you know. I, I don't think they would have the chief justice on that, you know. I, I can't see him voting for that. The the leaked audio from this uh, S- uh, Supreme Court Historical Society uh, meeting basically backs that up where, you know, they were talking to the chief justice, trying to goad him into saying, you know, we were a Christian nation and all that, and he... <clears throat> He basically said, oh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think a lot of people would say otherwise. You know, I have a lot of friends who are Muslim or Jews or whatever. And, you know, I, I think they would say I belong here. You know, whatever he said in his exact words, uh-huh. you know, but he was shaking his head at that. I don't think that, you know, he would support that. Gorsuch, I, I don't think so. Bear, I mean, I, I just I can't see. From their demeanor and their judicial philosophy, where I could see them thinking that the government has that right, you know, or has that duty to do that enumerated to them. Because they're pretty big on, 
you know, what what powers were enumerated to the to the government. Mm -hmm. You know, were they specifically given the power to be able to do this? You know, and if you think they're conservative, you know, that's okay. But, you know, like I told these guys earlier, and like I said, I write things out, you know, much better. So is quickly, you know, what I wrote to them on this issue is that that, that issue is not conservative, okay? Capital, not conservative. Okay, just like banning someone from wearing a mask is not conservative, okay? If the government has no right to mandate a mask, which I would support, then it has no right to ban one. In other words, okay, the government has no purview whatsoever over masks or insert your other issue. Yeah. That is conservatism, okay? Now, the key to it is, though, that is conservatism. And it's a type of conservatism that I sometimes would agree with, even support, even though I was never a member of conservatism's former party. Yes, former, okay? What we see now is not conservatism. The government has no right in these things. To say otherwise is anti-conservative, all right? The kicker, though, is to say otherwise and then threaten with violence or punishment those who do not agree or who do not follow is fascism. That's Correct. the that we've crossed into today. Correct. That's the difference. Are you reading something from something you wrote? That I wrote that earlier today in a Facebook <laughs> chat. To yeah, okay, all right. I, I, <laughs> I just pounds. noticed you were looking down and then you were looking back up. And Yeah, I, I read what I wrote to them earlier when the, someone brought up the... Uh, the picture I sent a picture of the headline in the Washington Post that said yep. that the superintendent of Oklahoma schools uh, said somewhere I don't remember now that that they were going to teach religion that they that they need to or had a duty to or need to start or whatever teaching religion and there well, wasn't it Louisiana too wasn't it Louisiana, Louisiana as well started, yeah well yeah because I saw an interview with the with the governor down there or maybe one of the school superintendents and they were just it's happening and well it's louisiana going to was where well, they originally were doing the thing with the ten yeah. commandments but That's then this thing came law that you had to have it in every school system. right okay. yeah that, louisiana I, I passed see. louisiana passed their law that said you had to take okay. the ten commandments so, and put them in a picture frame and hang them up on the wall okay yeah okay that, that's what i was talking okay. about too. but then oklahoma's superintendent said well, yeah, I agree, but that doesn't go far enough. We're not, not only do we need to hang the Ten Commandments up on the wall, we need to work them into our curriculum. Gotcha. Okay. okay. You know, which is that's again, you said you know, what okay. I said. I thought it was the same thing, only I guess I didn't pick up the Oklahoma part, I guess. And, 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 and you know, what I've said was, number was one, that's, that's not conservatism, okay? It's just, it's just not. No. But setting aside that argument, the problem is what we've done is we've crossed the line where we're no longer arguing over these things or debating these things as a matter of policy of conservatism or liberalism or progressivism or whatever ism you want to call it. We've crossed the line where it's come to the point of, well, no, that, that's what we ought to do. And you folks who don't like it, you know, if we win, we're going to have you locked up. No, but they, they, we're going to we're going to we're going we're gonna to come back, and, and there's going to be punishment for that. In these two That's cases, that. Louisiana and Oklahoma, they're saying, no, this is what we're going to do. They're not yeah. saying this is something we right. should discuss. It's not open for discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and those who do not go along with it will suffer the consequences of not going along with it. Yeah, that is what conservatives for years have decried as fascist or mm -hmm. or as tyranny you know i mean mm -hmm. okay no, that not. is tyranny okay tyranny is when the king says no this is what you will do yeah. and if you do not Off you will suffer the consequences yeah. of it which by the way the consequences of it aren't you know you can't uh you can't live in a certain place or you know have Off a with your head. thing or whatever <laughs> no the consequences of it are severe they are they are death or severe loss of economic Limb. standing you know of of what right. many people saw as rights that's tyranny you know i mean we we get a step closer to it every day and we got a step closer to it tonight as far as i'm concerned matter of fact we took at least two steps closer to it tonight did you see it tonight brian 
Yes, I did. And what was your takeaway? Exactly what Josh said about we have one guy, who, both guys that I want, you know, got one guy who I don't think is capable of doing the job. And then the next guy who's a liar, you know, one one after another, just lining them up. Yeah. You could almost anticipate what he's going to say right when he starts saying it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, but it's. Yeah. I want, I my German mother-in-law was having a heart attack at the same time. She she kept texting me, and she doesn't text at all very much. And she's going Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. Yeah, exactly. How can people exactly. not see there? That's exactly what Josh is saying. It's, yep. She said yeah. it's fascism happening. It's blooming in front of us. Yeah, and she yeah. Well, lived it. My question she is, lived it. Uh, my question is, is Trump doing this consciously? Or is this? Yeah. Does this just happen to be his nature? He wants his family. He wants his family to rule the U.S. He, yeah, he wants that's all his, his kids lined up. Huh. He wants to do whatever he wants to do. It's his, he, he's immune to all laws. Immune to all hmm. mores or anything. He just he wants, I want to, to do. I can do it. She is yeah, literally scared. She is literally scared. Uh, really, he wants yeah. the daughter and to she be the lived next... through the real thing yeah. hmm. and she knows Wait. what it is she knows yeah. what it is she stocks up food still because she's scared that something's going to happen yeah. we have to tell her to stop buying shit well you know it's amazing <laughs> that she had to live through something like that and it then is because I believe and her. then she has right. to live through it all over again How it's exactly come... in this country yeah. she yeah. came to this country to get away from that shit Mm-hmm. Well, there's people. And she respects Europe. this country. She's she has a heavy German accent, and yeah. she gets pissed off when somebody doesn't learn English. Mm. No, I I trust she wasn't. This, was she there during the Holocaust, or was she there right she after? She was escaping in in forty four, in forty with her mother. Yeah, lost her father, yeah. lost her a couple people from her family. Uh, to 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 fascism. Yeah, was, leave, was escaping from. Were Hitler. they were they Jewish? No. Wow. They were so Germans. That didn't they didn't um, agree with the with yeah. the Hitler belief. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's why they were enemies of the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They also killed six million other people that weren't Jewish. Oh, they killed. Uh, they were supposed to be on a boat. Homosexuals, gypsies. Yeah. yeah. They were supposed to be on a boat. They had that a was problem. that was. Uh, yeah. That was um, that was loaded up with I, I don't know I can't remember the exact number but I'll just use random numbers that was supposed to have say twenty thousand people on it they loaded like forty thousand people on it and mm -hmm. her mother said no we're not getting on that boat it's gonna sink and it sank <laughs> and all those people lost their lives and she got on a train and went the other direction wow. with her kid wow. yeah she's got some stories yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, and there aren't many people Good around question. to tell those stories anymore. No, every time, every time I'm talking to her, I say, "Record, record." <laughs> no, it's 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 up to the historians now to do that. But that's that's the problem with the movement of fascism, et cetera, and Trump is they've managed to push this narrative, and they keep working on it. That all those those historians are just just academics and all those academics you know they're just big left wingers so they're just going to write yeah. stuff that pushes their agenda yeah. even though that's a total load of horse shit coming from someone who works and lives in the field uh, it, it's it's nonsense but that doesn't mean that he hasn't been able to convince people of it and not just him others the the right has been saying that garbage for years you know oh. so that's that's what's scary about that is but that's that's what you know tyrannical people do that's what fascists do like i said they're not here yet they take a, a step they got to they got to do their groundwork before they can they can do this you know and they're doing it they're yeah. they're laying it out there i mean again I, I, I mean if people are tired of hearing it i guess i don't care hitler like i said he didn't have to come in the back door okay he walked right in the front door <laughs> And they opened it for him and were happy to have him. You know? <clears throat> and there are a hell of a lot of people in this country, obviously, who are happy to have Trump. They're drinking They're the cool. They're fanatical about it. 
They you made know? the Kool Aid, and he's, they're drinking it. I'm not so fanatical about Biden, a guy that I've voted for and have really liked and admired most of my life, to, to say, you know, oh, nope, nope, everything's fine, everything's fine, nope, 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 nope. I mean, no. If they came out tomorrow and said, you know, Biden, this, we're going to do this, this, and this, okay. That's what's good for America, and that's what we're going to do. You know, but Trump's people are incapable of doing that. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, you do know with Joe Biden that he has the whole country's interest at heart. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, that he wants to be president not because of an ego, although I have to say a little bit of ego had to play into him deciding to run again. You know, I think that was being a bit on the egotistical side. He's trying to plug the dam. He's trying to plug the dam, but there are a lot of other people who could plug it and probably, I mean, you get a guy like Newsom and he would boot uh, sure. uh, Trump to the curb. Just, you yeah, know. yeah. And in a debate, and if you had oh, Newsom yeah. there, he would have ripped him up. Trump. Yeah. I mean, if that's what's best for our country, then I'll support it. You know who you know, also be best? You see Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks on that that Gene Wilder special. My God, he's like what ninety nine yeah. or something like that. That yeah. guy's got his wits. So you look at him compared to Biden. It's like, I'll go Mel over either one of them. I would never vote for Trump. Now, well, can I ask you a question with going back to what Josh said? No, not at all. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, go ahead. Next. Go ahead. Um, you know why, Alex? Is Trump? This may be far. Is Trump the vessel that the Republican Party needs? To sell it, though. I mean, he can, he, because he knows he's going after that fringe group. So they, they're hoping that's enough to win the election. I don't think it is. I'm saying that the Demic or the Republicans are playing a really dangerous game here because yeah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If they lose yeah. this election, they're through. They've got to come up with another party. They've got to just create a whole different party. And if because they win, the party becomes a Nazi party. Exactly. I don't think way we lose. Really lose. Yeah. Yeah, they could they could well, stir up enough Democrats to say we just gotta yeah, vote for but, Biden just to keep him out too. I, yeah. I don't think they have a it Trump could double backfire. So I don't think they even have anybody behind him that could even win though. Even if, let's say God forbid Trump wins Alex and everybody. You really think they have anybody there that's viable to win after him? Yes, his, his daughter. Like his daughter. Oh, she can't run. Come he's on. got his family lined up. The Trumpers yeah. will just follow. They'll just he follow. He's gonna. He's Biden gonna go out there. Say, everybody who voted for me. Vote for. Here's the next one in line. I don't think he. I don't think he's that powerful like you think to that to that degree. I think. I think Alex. If he loses, you're never gonna hear from him again. And the whole family. I think oh. he's got five far more power than we would like to admit. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, he's not even in office. And I mean, come on, come on. This guy, this guy, it goes out with a porn star. Gets, he's a convicted felon. He's a, con Three, he's four, a, a convicted rapist. Uh, he, we don't know. It, all on and on and on, and still these Republicans stick well, with yeah. him. I mean, come on. Yeah. It, How it, many it, of these it, vice it, president uh, people, uh, these vice president candidates that he's talking about, have been num no, no Trumpers? That are now sucking his ass yeah, to get, be, yeah, be vice yeah. president. They were all no Trumpers. Yeah. Now they're ready to go. Okay, I'll be your vice president. It's complete bullshit. Yeah, same as before. Same thing. He rip, rips. The what does he do that gets them to do that? Well, they're afraid to lose their job because Liz Cheney had a that's back bullshit. Yeah, no, no, no. Career, let me finish. Liz Cheney back. Liz Cheney did not kiss his ring, and she did the right thing. She didn't kiss his ass. Yeah, well, there's well, a lot of them that didn't do it, but there's still people that are doing it, and that's the but, problem. That's what I'm saying, but there are people like Liz Cheney who refuse to say, "I don't like this guy." They just want to save their ass. It's like Kinsinger it's did it. Dead, it's the worker and work who's kissing ass to keep his job. Kinsinger did it. He's a Republican. He's out there about you know boasting about Biden. Yeah, yeah. No, but he got kicked did it out today. Yeah, he, he got didn't get kicked out. He quit, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. And look at John McCain. We he literally still thing. standing up. Cheney did. You know, these still they're still standing up. They, at least they got integrity. Well, I think we well, will all agree. We will all agree to agree that there's no figuring this whole thing out, and it just flies in the face of any rationality. It's a okay. mess right now, but yeah. hopefully, no other time in out. history could a man get, be elected president with all the baggage that Trump exactly. has. Exactly, he on shouldn't his even back. be able to run. Anyway, because thanks still to don't think uh, he's going to th make it. Thanks to Kevin, and I thank you to, uh, of course, to uh, our good friend uh, 
uh, Mr. Uh, Wheeler, who, uh, by the way, uh, won't be here tomorrow night because he has to work. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's uh, say good night to Charlie Wallace. Thank you, Charlie, for being here. Jeffrey, very good having you here. Uh, Alan, nice having you on board. Uh, uh, thanks to Tony for joining us once again. And of course, Brian, always good to have you here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye. Okay, at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll have another citizen panel around here tomorrow night. In the meantime, stay tuned for Amy Manuel. I'm sure they're going to want to talk about this. And she's here taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.